In this practical, we'll be implementing approximate matching using the boyer moore algorithm that we developed in a previous practical. So to begin with, I've pasted into this notebook all the code from boyer moore So we have all of the pre-processing code here, and then the boyer moore function itself, and we're going to use this. So let's start by creating a new function. And this will take as arguments um, our pattern p that we're searching for, a text t that we're searching in, and a maximum number of mismatches n that we're willing to allow. And so we're going to um, do this using the pigeonhole principle. So we're going to divide the string p into n plus 1 segments, and then at least one of those segments must match perfectly against t. So let's start by finding the uh, length of each of these segments. Just like that. And then we'll create a set of that will fill out with all of the indices where we found matches. Now I'll say for each um, segment in P, so for i up to n plus 1, we have to calculate the bounds of p for the segment that we're searching for. And the end will just be i plus 1 times the segment length. But we want to make sure that we don't run past the end of p. So I'm going to take the minimum of this and the length of p. So your segment length could either be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter uh, than a perfectly even uh, length of the different partitions. So you're just making up for that basically by resizing the last partition so that it, so that it makes up for it, right? Right, because p might not be, uh, its length might not be a perfect multiple of n plus 1. Mm -hmm. So this will make sure that we don't uh, go past the end of the string. Okay. So now, um, Let's create our, let's do our pre-processing and create our boyer moore object. We're just going to use the substring of P that we just calculated, and we have to pass in the alphabet. That's going to do all our boyer moore pre-processing for us. It's going to make the tables for the good suffix rule and the bad character rule. Yep. And now we can just run our boyer moore algorithm. Passing in our preprocessed our preprocessed object and the text t, and this will return a list of places where that substring of p has matched to our text t. So now we have to step through each of those positions and make sure that the rest of p matches t with no more than n mismatches. So I'm going to say for each position m in matches. So the first thing to test is to make sure that our location doesn't let p run off either the beginning or the end of t. So I'm going to say if m is less than start or m minus start plus length of p is greater than length of t. If either of these is true, this means that p runs off the beginning of t or past the end of t. So in this case, I'll just say continue to skip, through, skip the rest of this loop. And now we need to count the number of mismatches uh, between the rest of p and t. So I'll, I'll first uh, compare the part of p before start, so from 0 up to start, against the corresponding um, positions in t. Say up to range. And zero to start. Uh, so increment mismatches if the character doesn't match. And if the number of mismatches is ever greater than our maximum n, uh, then this doesn't work, so we're just going to break. So this will test the part of P uh, before the segment that we already compared. Now we just have to compare the suffix after that segment.
And we'll do the same thing as in the loop above. Increment mismatches if it doesn't match. And if we found more than n mismatches, then break. So now we've looked to the left and we've looked to the right and we've accumulated all the mismatches. Yeah, so now let's just double check that uh, if our number of mismatches is no more than n, then we can add this to our set all matches that we had above. And we don't want to add position m, we want to add m minus start to actually get the beginning of p. And then when this is all done, we just have to return all matches, I'll convert it to a list. So I made it as a set so that if we happen to find the same starting position from different segments in P, uh, the set will just store that as one position. It won't store duplicates. So right. it won't get more than one of the same coordinate. Yeah, for example, you might call this function allowing up to two edits or up to two mismatches, and then P might match exactly somewhere, in which case all three partitions of P are all going to match, and you're going to add that same element three times. So by making it a set, we still get back what we want, which is just that one result, that one offset where P occurs within P. Yep. Okay, so now we've done this. Let's uh, test it, see if it works. So I'm going to make up a P and a T. So now let's see. Um, Approximate match of P, T, and we'll say up to two mismatches. Uh -oh. Let's see. So either start or end is not an integer. Yeah. Why would that be? Maybe one of them is a floating point. Maybe segment length is. Um, because that is floating point division. That's possible. Let me try just yeah. converting it to an int like that and see if this works. There, there we go. go. OK. <laughs> so it was a problem with uh, segment length was being stored as a float, but it needed integer indices uh, for the array. So I just converted it, or convert that to an int. So p matches against t with up to two mismatches in two places. Um, so we can double check that this is right. You can see that from position zero, we have a mismatch here between A and C, and the last character is a mismatch between G and A. We can also, if we print um, starting at index five in T, it's A, A, T, 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 G, so there's just a mismatch with the C there. So that has one mismatch. Mm -hmm. So if we were to do this with up to one mismatch, only one of these should uh, matches should be found, it should be the second one at five. We see that's correct. We no longer get the match at zero because that one had two mismatches. And if we allow maximum number of mismatches of zero, we now have no matches because there's no cases where P matches T perfectly. Yeah.